Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I've got six arms to go through as is the usual, so I'm going to go through them as quickly as I can do. We begin with a band called Deceased and their newest album, Children of the Morgue. This is a band that's been around for about 40 years, and they're a sort of death metal band that uses a lot of elements of thrash. Oh god, my hair is going crazy already. I'm going to give this one the tied highest grade I can give, uh, which is an A+. Uh, yeah, really enjoyable stuff. One thing I liked about it was not just the, like, instrumental stuff, because they mix in thrash and death riffs really well. It's, it makes for a really great combo, especially in terms of the drumming, and the vocals are quite good too. Um, but interestingly, uh, interestingly, <laughs> lost my voice, went through puberty. Uh, it's the main sort of theme. The band usually deals with the theme of, like, death as a concept, but, like, it's used in a very theatrical and e even sort of sad way at times with uh, the main theme of like loss being gone over and actually used to tell a story there's like actual pacing instruction the pacing on this album is really fucking good by the way it does have its short songs but they're used really nicely as building gaps and you know most of the songs are uh, are quite long but that's far from a bad thing i like how the small stuff builds up to them it doesn't just feel replayed over and over because it's got this big narrative that surrounds it and it's helped by the band's performances as well i would say if there's any like weak point it might be the production i do feel like it's a little bit too clean at times and sh probably should or could or what nap should or could uh, have been um maybe a little bit more raw in some areas but for how it's handled it's handled really well presented really well and I like the unique take on it for a band that's been around for four decades as well to be able to be able to do something like this in a genre which isn't known for having a lot of nuance i really appreciated this kind of thing next is a band called the fastbacks and their new album for what reason this is this band's first album in 25 years they've actually been around for five years longer than deceased have fun fact i'm gonna just want to be plus i thought it was really good sort of power pop punky stuff with some really nice classical punk rock elements but i like the more pop, uh, pop focus and i like the optimistic vibe i think it's just the vibe and tone of the album that i think are the main selling points the band all performed quite well although i couldn't tell you exactly who's in it because they've had a lot of members although interestingly one of those members was duff mckagan who you might also know for his work in guns and roses and velvet revolver as well he was in this band as well interesting um i wish i had more of the lyrical themes but uh I don't really have many negatives about the album, you know? And yes, I am reading a little bit from my review on Discord. Um, and I do think the pacing... Some, some of the songs are a little bit too simple for my liking. Well, I don't know. I think the riffs are quite nice, you know? It's just got a really good sound. It's got a really good vibe. It's an album that just made me feel like quite optimistic and a little bit energetic, but not too much because this is me we're dealing with. But I liked a lot of the riffs, and the band have a really good chemistry, depending on whoever the hell was in it. And uh, it was produced by the band's leader, I think, Kurt Block. He does a really good job of the mix too, and really catches that nostalgic vibe quite well, so if you really want that sort of 80s sort of vibe, this'll do. Next is a bit of a more recent band, we have Nails with their new album Every Bridge Burning. I think I listened to them before, I don't know, because this is their first album in 8 years. I'm going to this one a B plus as well. I thought it was really, really good, um, very solid uh, hardcore punk, but leaning into like the grindcore and power violence thing. Um, yeah, I thought the drumming especially was fucking great, and I have to give all the credit to Carlos Cruz. Again, reading a bit from my review on Discord, but you don't really fucking care about that, do you? Because I don't. Uh, well, yeah, you don't care about me reading the review, but you should care about the album, because the album's really good. It's got, like, this unrelenting heaviness. It's something that the band have been acclaimed for, although some reviews I've seen have said that this is just like any other Nails album, but it was my first Nails album, I think, so... Yeah, I didn't really see any problems with it. Uh, super duper heavy... Um, I do think too many of the songs are a bit short, and also the lyrical theme is just very misanthropic and a bit too sad and fucking depressing. Not like what Disease did with their album, where there was that much more theatrical element with things that tried to tell a story, like... Nails here just sound really, almost incorrigibly angry. I don't know if that's even the right term, but... Yeah, but also... There's really fucking heavy riffs, the bands do put in the absolute sweat, and Kurt Ballou produces it. And if you're going to be a heavy music band, especially like in the power violence area, you need someone like Kurt Ballard to back you up. So, yeah, you know, it does have its uh, flaws, and maybe the band could have worked a bit more in some areas, but it's still a really fucking good bit of really fast growing. It's like 17 minutes. It's the shortest album in this video. 
So, uh, yeah, I can recommend it if you just want something short, sweet, but also really heavy. Surprisingly impacting when it wants to be too. Next is Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with his new album, well, sorry, their new album, I keep forgetting it's an actual band, uh, named Wild God. Uh, so this is my first full Nick Cave album. I've heard about him before. Uh, mostly absorbed as so through osmosis, but I don't think I've ever listened to a song until I listened to this album. I'll give this one a B plus. Um, I felt like in terms of its emotion, it was really good at capturing it. And Nick is a really good storyteller, and I think the lyrics are maybe my favorite thing about the album because it uses a lot of like religious overtones and themes and symbology to tell a compelling story of pain and loss and uh, life and death. You know, really compelling stuff. Um. And the uh, production is quite nice as well, handled by Nick, if memory serves correctly. And uh, really good there, really good from the band too. I feel like, as a whole, it doesn't really feel like it goes anywhere super interesting. Because it's got a great core cool concept with the lyrics, but it feels like the, the instrumentation around it just sort of... Doesn't really feel like it matches a whole lot. You know, there is a bit of a lack of urgency at times. And I... I do wish that something could have been uh, done more with the framing to make it feel like it's actually trying to push itself out a bit more. I know this is my first Nick Cave album, but I felt like it was just another sort of day at the office for any Nick Cave album. I still really enjoyed it, obviously. Uh, really good storytelling, really good emotion in that storytelling. Mix was great, and the band have a, a dedication that really can't be denied, especially Nick Cave's voice. He's got a really, really good voice for this stuff. But yeah, it is most of the lyrical themes that really drew, uh, drew me to this one. And I can recommend it if you enjoy that sort of symbology, because this album uses that quite well. Next is a band named Oceano and their new album, Blue and Chaos. This is a band I had also heard about before, never fully listened to. Glad I did, because this is the other A plus of the episode. Uh, this is a sort of death quarry band. I guess I should have pointed out that uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Scenes are like a sort of experimental rocky thing, I guess. Although it's like more of an alt rock vibe. But they do experiment with the sound. I actually quite like the uh, gent and melodic elements to this one, which I really wasn't expecting, but I like it when my death, uh, Deathcore, I like it when Deathcore actually tries to mix up itself and actually tries to do something new in this album, really, to do that. I don't know why I looked at the clock there in the bottom corner of my laptop. Um, but yeah, this has a really interesting instrumental take that you don't really hear a lot in Deathcore. It's like melodic Deathcore, I guess you could call it, with a genty vibe. Also, my toe crack there, that kind of hurt. That's besides the point. Um, really liked the performances as well, especially the lead singer Adam Warren. Really good growl, and it fits the style so fucking well. And uh, Joey Sturgis produced it as well. Joey Sturgis is a really great heavy music producer. Um, I know him more for his metalcore work than the de work of deathcore bands, but like he can hang with a sort of de uh, deathcore production style, and I really like the sound that he brought out. I do like the lyrics mostly for their impact and delivery, but I couldn't find much on messages. I think there might have been mostly stuff about depression, but you really can't find a lot if you do even try to look. And I did like the pacing quite a lot as well, even if it did feel like I started to expect what was coming at times, but as I said before, you know, an album giving some th giving someone something that they're thinking is going to happen is not really a bad thing. You know, giving something that they actually want is a good thing, and it should be common amongst most music, you know? But uh, yeah, if you've heard about Oceano, uh, this is their first album in seven years, and I think it's a really good uh, return to form for them, even though I haven't listened to any of this stuff before. Still recommend it if you want some really fucking good deathcore, though. And finally, we have White Hills with their new album, Beyond This Fiction. So this is a band that's been around for a lot longer than I thought they'd been. I think it's like their 12th album or something. They've only been around since the 2000s, though, so they're prolific, to say the least. Um, given this one the lowest grade of the episode, but that lowest grade is a B. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It's a sort of post-punky, psychedelic, experimental vibe, and I think the riff's actually quite nicely done with that, and um, this is something I say in the review, which I'm, again, sort of borrowing from. The band actually juggle a lot of ideas in the air, and not all of them land. I will say the pacing is probably my least favorite part of this album, because they focus too much on doing those ideas, but they didn't really focus on forming a structure around those ideas, you know, it just, it does feel a bit aimless, especially, like, from an early, like, early on point, because there's only seven songs, but the album is, like, 34 minutes and five seconds, well, it is that long, because that's what I've got written here, but it doesn't really feel like it does a whole lot, it's got enough time for a seven-song album squeezing, uh, managing to stretch itself out uh, over half an hour, you know, it's got a lot of time, it just doesn't utilize it fully, but, you know, it's got a really good production style, which I think was done by the band, who is just two people, and they both have amazing chemistry as vocalists and as musicians. They both work really well. 
and all the instrumentation really pops are like the guitar, bass, drum, synth, keyboard all works. I do wish that there were more in terms of lyrics though, because it's supposed to be based on the like folklore works of Joseph Campbell, but I couldn't really find a lot for lyrics. Oh, sorry, I thought that was a spider, it's just a moth. Um, but yeah, I couldn't really find a lot for the lyrics, and it, it, there's not really many. I wish there were actually more words on this album, and there's not really quite enough words. It is mostly like style of substance, but it's got a really good style to it, so... Yeah, if that's something you're up for, especially in a psychedelic, um, post punky thing, give this a go. Next is the official ranking system that you all care about. So at the bottom it would probably be White Hills with Beyond This Fiction. And then after that, it, it is kind of difficult. I'd have to go with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with Wild God, The Fastbacks with For What Reason, Nails with Every Bridge Burning, Top 2 uh, would end be in order, probably Oceana with Living Cares and then Deceased with Children of the Morgue. As always though, go and listen to all of these yourself, formulate your own opinions, because that's what makes this shit really fucking interesting. My shit is loading around the OneDrive screen. Favourite song goes to Farewell Taken to Forever from Deceased Selden Children of the Morgue. I just really like it, it's a really good way to close out the story. I like the storytelling and the instrumentation, it's all good. Favourite cover is difficult, I would have to go with... Probably Living Chaos by Oceano. I just really like the look of it, and I like that it works in the sort of like uh, almost circle logo that they've used on all their other albums. So, uh, yeah, really good way to work in, and looks kind of grim and kind of badass at the same time. That'll about do it for me, then. Next thing you'll see me for will be tomorrow the Go Home Show for Reverence, which is going to be next Friday. That's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I don't know if I'll do a reaction, but maybe. I don't know. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm back to Let's Playing, by the way, and my Outland Let's Play is completely done as of last night, so if you want to go and watch that, that'd be great. And I'll see you all uh, tomorrow for the Gaiama Show. As always, thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye-bye.